Daniel from Lions Den MMA under coach Dave Matthews and that's the gym over in Exeter travelled all the way to Birmingham for this fight Lions Den guys always send out great fighters always quite endurable fighters as well a lot of heart good chin uh, they just don't stop the powerful tattoos beautiful full chest piece going on I think the, the full chest piece is in fashion now. The Conor McGregor effect, the, the line or whatever. Is a baboon on his chest? Uh, he's got a ape, I think, on his chest. Ape on his chest. Baboon the would be SBG, weird. The SBG. Ah, yeah, the SBG is like a gorilla. Or, yeah. yeah ah, um, I see. Now, do you think these guys with the tattoos, do they intimidate the other fighter? It is. I think it's like part of our DNA. It's like war paint a little bit. And uh, you make us out look like maybe a little bit more of an animal or something. Um, I don't think at this level it's going to make much of a difference. It's never bothered me if my opponent had tattoos, to be honest. Unless it was like my name and a heart or something. That'd be weird, but... Yeah. <laughs> I've been so excited to see Bakhtiar on this card. I love when we have Sombo fighters, because, like, Lion's Den, they're kind of like... the the kind of normal gyms we get on this show, the brilliant gyms, but the normal gyms, everyone's quite similar. It's like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai, wrestling, or, or some combination of the, those. We get Sambo on, and we get something a little bit different. They're kind of similar-ish, but we get slightly different takedowns, slightly different submissions, slightly different style, and it can make it so much more fun to watch. You know, it's like style versus style. It's nice to see variety here and he's, um, in, in the, on, on the show as well. There's another good thing about Battle Arena. It, it has a lot of value. You've got Sambo guys, you've got Taekwondo guys. We've had some Kung Fu. We've also had Kung Fu guys. It's but never gone well, the Kung Fu. Just put it out there. Yeah. <laughs> However, it is, uh, it is very common to see. Or oh, you've got boxing and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as your main. Or you've got uh, uh, your two main arts. Or you've got a mix of Muay Thai, boxing, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Judo. What I'd like to see more is actually judo fighters because the big throws are very, very entertaining. Strong, durable, and you get those some crazy throws. We've how, seen how, we've seen Bachelor on this show before, and he is a really good fighter, very well-rounded. However, uh, some guys tend to have good throws as well. This is very true. Introducing the fighter in the red corner, weighing 69.4 kilograms, fight out of LD Fighters, Dan Neal. And his opponent, the fighter in the blue corner, weighing 67.4 kilograms, fights out of Counter Combat Club, Bakhtiar Rakir. <laughs> and a rapping chart is four minutes. So we have Dan Neal in the navy blue shorts. They are some skin tight shorts right there. And we have Bakhtiar in his own skin tight black shorts. And uh, now this fight is in the 70 kilo division. It's the lightweight division. Uh, both guys look kind of quite big for lightweights. Yes. Oh, it's an aggressive start. Very quickly. We can see Dan Neal has got some serious athleticism, but he's got to be careful of his neck. It almost landed on his head there. It could have been really awkward, but although he's been caught in the guillotine just a little bit, it has landed on the side, which might keep him safe. Now, in you, when you're in a guillotine, you actually want to land on the other side of the person. Even though he's in side control there, if uh, Bakchar's got a really good guillotine, he might still be able to finish it or recover guard to be able to threaten with this guillotine choke. What would you do here, do here Chris? Because I know walking back across, you might end up back in the guard. I would do exactly what Bakchar's trying to do there. I would try and slide my left knee across and then put my right knee over there, right leg over their back, and then have, be able to use my legs and my hips to help sink this choke in. Or, in all honesty, you might want to abandon this and defend the position. Uh, you're just taking away the hand and pushing his head away whilst he gains the top position would be good. However, it seems to kind of lost the guillotine here now. His head is still, uh, Dan's head is still very deep. However, he's kind of starting to edge to going towards the other side. Maybe, maybe Dan's defense has looked a, uh, not quite correct. He should have jumped to the other side of uh, Bakchar and then he would have been really safe from this choke. But even in this position of kind of a half guard or reverse half guard, he's going to struggle. 
He's trying to pull the hand away to stop, uh, stop the guillotine having any sort of effect. Um, however, he doesn't look in too much trouble here, um, having seen his face. And Bataille's got to be careful. You don't blow your arm out. You hold a guillotine for a few minutes. That can be exhausting. And then your hands just start dropping towards him to stand up, and this that, that will cause a factor in later on in the fight. Dan landing some uh, ground and pound. Dan's right trying one of my favourite submission escapes, where you just punch him square in the face. It's really effective. You should give it a go, Marty. <laughs> Awesome. Heavy body shots. I've been impressed by Dan's athleticism. He's a strong, strong, strong guy. He needs to keep his left hand over the... over the. Oh, now he's got his head out. Oh, Bakchal's playing some nice guard from the bottom, but Dan is powering through. Oh, great kind of reverse triangle position here for Bakchal. We talked about the Somma of Bakchal at the start of this, and it's working well. His unorthodox grappling is keeping him really safe, and he's landing great ground and pound strikes from the bottom from this reverse guard position this is a really unusual position and he's making it work really effectively a great power on those body shots not how often do we see someone pound from the bottom it is uh, it's good some good body shots to definitely cause um, Dan to be tired later on in the fight I think Dan might be tired already I think that guillotine attempt that huge takedown and trying to fight out these positions which he's kind of muscling through that can be a very exhausting thing to do however back there as well needs to watch his watch the nieces watch his energy level because yeah. Using these big punches might tire him out. How do you score this round? You like Bakchar landed more ground and pound and had a guillotine, but then Dan got huge takedown and was on top and was maybe controlling position. Interesting, interesting. You see uh, Redney on the side of Dan's uh, ribs, um, which I wonder if it, it caused any uh, pain at all. Um, in the long term, in the short term, of course, it'll cause pain, but in the long term, it will cause much effect. And back Charles Choke, Rustam Sudowski, he's a two time European champion, presumably in Sambo, and a nine time street fighting champion. I think. I don't know how that works. It's probably, maybe we are going to assume that it's a street fighting MMA organization or something. Because I feel like. As a trained fighter, I could just beat up nine people in the street fairly easily. And call yourself a nine time. Well, I would be the champion. Alleyway champion. <laughs> His coach is going to beat me up in the next show now. In the street. He's going to be ten times champion. <laughs> God, I'm excited for round two. Will Dan come out with a huge takedown? Dan in the blue. Back char in the black. He is coming out looking for another takedown. I'm surprised. I thought maybe Dan would want to keep it on the feet once he felt that grappling, irritating bo bottom game of Bakchar. Uh, Dan going for takedown and Bakchar really pulling guard, actually, in a way, um, while trying to get the guillotine. Um, do you think Bakhtar's, uh kind of specialism is inside playing guard? It's very weird for Sombo guys. Normally, their top game kind of do. It's all the, the takedown or maybe kind of legs. You don't see them pull guard, that's much more of a jiu-jitsu thing to do, but Bakhtar's well rounded, but he's in trouble here in side control. Dan Dan's no, he's not. straight him out, slid him out like hot knife through butter. Uh, he's got the face, uh, arm, arm and triangle, oh this is going to be a tight submission and Dan's got some serious muscles and arms on him, if he gets squeezes this the fight could be over, Bakhtar's doing a good job of escaping. What he needs to do is put his right hand on his ear, but he's not doing that very well, it's caught right across his face, oh, oh he's, he's still his out. elbow out. Very good defense by Bakhtar. Dan with the ground and pound. Bakhtar is using his hands to play, but he needs to defend intelligently. He's kind of doing an okay job of defending. That half guard is really difficult when you're against the cage like this, because what Bakhtar wants to do is get onto his right side and kind of shrimp away, but the, the cage is right in the way. Slightly desperate move. Has it worked for him? Oh, he's ended up on top. Slick move, and he stepped over the guard straight away. Very slick grappling and rolling transition there from Bakchar. He's got the underhook now on the other side, which is uh, very effective, so uh, Dan can pop out to the back. Oh, with Dan, oh, this man is straight on top. Again. Bakchar does look like a guard player. He wasn't kind of stabilised on top. He seemed quite happy to go straight to his back. A nice pass there by Dan. Very slick, just powering through. So athletic. Oh, hit him with the shoulder. Old school MMA, we like that. Bakchar batting mat, backing mat. Bakchar's grappling is really good, apart from he's just letting people mount him. He got that Back roll again. Now. This is like a repetition. We're doing drills in the gym. 
Backtrot's got to look to pass those legs. Dan's good. Dan is very muscled for this weight, and that could mean that he starts getting tired as the fight goes deeper. Oh, it's a terrible pull to guillotine there by Vaccio. Vaccio, I think, is trying to get that guillotine finish in this fight, um, which might shoot uh, shoot himself in the foot doing this because he could have just taken top position there. And every time Dan just steps over to mount, he's a, Dan isn't doing that that transition to mount particularly beautifully. Well, he's sliding the knee reasonably okay, but Vaccio should be able to stop him. Fairly easy, great knees by Vaccio. Now he's changing his approach, mixing up what he's trying to do. This is one of those fights. I'm glad I'm not a judge. That was very backwards and forwards consistently. Oh yeah, both rounds are quite hard to judge. Yeah, both rounds hard to score. That was awesome. <laughs> it was an awesome round for both fighters. It was back and forth. And this is what I like to see. You know, the first fight started off very active. The second fight is now, again, very, very active. Now in the third round, I think Dan might come, uh, might try and come out and get the takedown again because it does look favorable in his, his his position. I'd like to see these guys strike a little bit. They kind of, both of them look very timid to stand and throw some bombs. They kind of, uh, they both want to grapple, but it's almost a, it, an odd clash of styles, kind of. Uh, Dan is very, very aggressive, maybe not beautifully technical. And Bacha is like very technical, but kind of missing a few fundamentals from his game. Marty said it all. Oh no, they're only lightweights. <laughs> oh, Ooh, spinning back. back. Now we're seeing some striking. Oh, nice right hand by Bacha, and then Dan going straight for that takedown. Dan walking over to his corner, it was a very smart move, getting his corner to help him now. He's past the side control, he's going to, tr he's going to look to use um, a couple of punches and then get that cross face pressure to get back into mount. And for our viewers that don't understand why he walked over this side, it's a, uh, you want to be right in front of your own corner so you can get advice from your cornermen, and you want your opponent to be as far away from their corner as they can. So we've got, we've got a noisy crowd here at Battle Arena, it's going to make it very hard for Bachar to hear his coaches who are telling him how to escape. Uh, however, um, what I've seen lately in fight shows, uh, as well in Battle Arena, is um, the fighters using the opposite corner's advice to their own advantage and yep. knowing what the other person is going to do. I, I've had a, the occasional terrible coach who I've been setting up a submission has gone, yeah, triangle him, and then my opponent's like gone, oh, no, I don't want that, and pulled out. And it's the most frustrating thing in the world. As a coach, there's a huge skill in knowing when to say nothing. Like, you need to be comfortable in silence. A bit like commentating sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to shut up. Sometimes you've got to not say anything and just uh, you know, let the fight and do the talking. Yep. And I, I find so it's been here at Battle Arena, I do listen to what some of the corners are saying. And sometimes you can see some coaches, not these coaches, they're, they're both great camps who are regulars at this, but some coaches just shout, just constantly advice, constant advice, constant advice, constant advice, constant advice. But only say something if you've got really something useful to say. And if your fight is going to do it anyway, don't say it. Bachar's desperately trying to get out of this position. Bachar's doing something really weird here. He's throwing a lot of strikes from the bottom of Psychotron, the bottom of these positions. He's like trying to throw kind of little down kicks and strikes from the bottom. And maybe that's what he's done in his Sombo style and that's slightly unorthodox style. But I, if I was in his position, I'd be 100% focused on just trying to escape the position, get back on top get back to my feet, get back to where I'm not losing this fight. And taking the least amount of damage. He's taking some damage to us. Um, whilst they're not big punches, they do add up after a while. Dan came out so strong, I thought he's probably going to get tired and the, the kind of this fight will turn the other way. But I've been so impressed by his cardio. He's just as dynamic, just as aggressive in this third round as he was in the first. With 30 seconds left in the fight. Um, Bakhtar's got to go away and work on that mount defense. Dan's just stepping to mount so easily. Although, although Bakhtar is holding down the head, therefore allowing um, himself not to get. Uh, yeah, he's done an amazing job of surviving. He hasn't, you know, he's been in some bad spots so many times in this fight and and ridden it through and done really well. But oh, oh, Bakhtar! Oh, the fight's over. It's, Probably quite clearly, Dan. Would you agree with me, Marty? Uh, I, I think I'd have to give this fight to Dan. Um, it just seemed like he finished off the fight in a better position for one. Um, he kind of you know, went for the takedown every round. 
it's, it's likely to edge towards down. Yeah, I think it's at least two rounds to Dan. Fairly clearly. I mean, easy decision. I would be a terrible referee, because fights like this, I wouldn't even bother getting the scorecards in. I'd be like... But see, this is why you commentate, Chris. This is why you commentate. <laughs> You're too biased. I'm not biased. You usually have a further grappler. I didn't pick the grappler this time. Oh, that's fair enough. Well, they're both grapplers at this stage. Yeah, this is, at this. this is true. Well, yeah, I don't even. We've got a new ring girl. She's got some abs on her. Oh, very in shape. Hubba hubba. She's a good looking girl. I agree with Chris. I couldn't have a girl that has bigger arms than me though. And that's not insulting her, she looks beautiful. No, I've you just, just have I've a just massive got puny ego. arms. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a puny massive arms. ego, Chris. <laughs> I've got a massive ego, that's <laughs> true. I need to get into bodybuilding. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Chris. Yeah, I think you need to bulk up a bit. That puny <laughs> arms of yours you need to work. <laughs> Yes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, now for the decision. So after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. And we have your winner by a split decision for the fighter in the red corner, Dan. Neil. Split decision, eh? That's a shock. <laughs> Every battle arena, we get Stevie Wonder back, judging. He's in the. Tough fight. Yeah, it was. It was a really tough and it was a tough grinding style as well, your kind of style, sort of wrestling, going down, working the ground and pound. Yeah, obviously, uh, the pound was the thing that started it up. But it never gets to pound, is it, you know? It's always the opposite, and I've got to go through the place. Well, we showed that you were well-rounded anyway. The pound was the standing, you ended up taking it down, so it does show that you were well-rounded. So, second round, you had an arm triangle. How close do you think you were with that? Oh, it was pretty flexible. I knew that I'd see what this was on YouTube. He was a really fast fighter, but I've got tired of close fighting that, um, but I was nice to think, uh, yeah, fair play to him. Well, it was a great fight, tough fight, but congratulations on the win. Ladies and gentlemen, make some more noise again for your winner, Dan Neal.